Now that we know which of the general body part is being hit, we need some sort of code that returns death animations based on that data. I'm going to go into the managers folder and create a C sharp script called death animation manager. Go into the code, the namespace, and this will be a singleton. I'm also going to go into the death folder and create a resources folder in there because I want a prefab. I want to attach a script to that prefab. I'm going to call it death animation loader. I'm going to create an empty object. Call it death animation loader. Make the position 000. zero, zero. Turn it into a prefab. I'm going to delete it from the scene view. And this prefab is going to have this code. Okay, so I'm going to go into the code. Again, namespace. And the manager is going to have the death animation loader. I'm just going to name it loader. And I need a function called set up death animation loader. I want to do this once in the beginning. So if the loader is null, then we instantiate it. Because it's in the resources folder, we can just call it by name. Allocate a new game object. And we're going to get the code from the game object. I'll call it loader here and change the name here. Okay, and the depth animation loader is just going to be loader. I want the loader to hold on to a bunch of data. I'm going to call it death animation data. And I'm going to turn this into a scriptable object. And I want to be able to create this scriptable object from the project window. The file name is just going to be new scriptable object. And the menu is going to be similar as what we already have. I think we start with the round bear games. Then I'll have a section called death. And I'll call it death animation data. I want to be able to specify which general body part each of the death animation is associated with. So I'm going to call it general body parts. I'm going to put them into a list. It's going to be a public variable. It's also got to have the animator, as well as some other info like, is the target facing the attacker or not? OK, I'm now going to go back to Unity. I should be able to create that scriptable object. Create it here. I'm going to call it falling back death. And the falling back death is going to be associated with the upper body as well as the arm. And it will be connected to this animator. So I'm going to drag it in. And this animation is going to happen when the target is facing the attacker. I want the loader to hang on to every single death animation data. So I'm going to create a list. And it's going to have the list of death animation data. Death animation data list. If I save and go back to Unity, I'm going to look for 
the prefab here. Right now I just have one death animation data, but later I'm gonna have many. For now it's just one. So put that in there. Now we need a public function from the death animation manager that returns a certain type of an animator. So I'm gonna call it get animator and it's going to be a public function. And it'll take in the parameters of the general body part. General body part. And based on that info, we're gonna return a specific death animation. First, we wanna set up the death animation loader if it's not there. Then we wanna go through each of the death animation data from the loader. And we want to compare the body part type from that data. And if the part matches, we want to return the death animation. First, let me create a list of the candidates. Actually, I want to cache it. So I always want to have a list of animator candidates. First, clear it. And then whenever we come across the animator that matches the info, we want to add it to that list. Okay, break out of the loop. And once we're done getting all the candidates, we want to return a random index from that candidates. So the ran random range is going to be between zero to the number of items in the list. And I think this is everything. I'm going to press Control T and go to the damage detector. And when we take damage, instead of getting the animator from the attack info, I want to get it now from the death animation manager. And we just got to pass on the right parameter. And that was the damage part. So once we put in the general body part into this function, it's going to give us a random animator based on what matches the body part. I'm going to press Control T again and go into the attack script. And this script is no longer going to need the death animators. So if I go back to Unity and play, oh, we don't need this either. Okay, so if I click play and punch, oh. I forgot to create a new list here. Let me go back and click play again. Okay, everything is exactly the same. Once something hits an upper body, the death animation manager is going to return a corresponding death animator. But if I punch something in the legs, we're probably going to get another error message because we don't have any death animator related to the leg hit. So I'm going to exit play mode and get that animation. I'm going to go to Mixemo and look for something called a soccer tackle. So I'm going to download it. Because this character gets right back up during the animation, 
I want another one to blend in with this. Something called back death. I want the later part of this animation, this part. Okay, so I'm going to download this too. Once you download, I'm going to drag both of them into the correct folder. I'm going to rename this and go through the importing process. Rename it here as well, flying back that ending. And I don't want the entire animation. I want it from somewhere around. here to the end and I want it to be positioned at the center of mass and I want the rotation to follow the body rotation click apply okay I'm gonna get rid of the materials don't need it and I'm going to do the same thing with the soccer tackle. And I don't want the entire animation with this either. Maybe from here to the impact. Right before it gets up. Because I don't want that part. Click apply. Okay, looks good. Now I'm going to go into the death folder and create an animator to combine those two animations. Animator controller. I'm going to name it soccer tackle. Go into the animator window and we're going to drag in those two animations. The soccer and the ending. And we want some sort of a transition. And the soccer tackle is going to have a character state that has a force transition ability. I'm going to go into the states and create a force transition ability. Player soccer tackle force transition. And I want the transition to happen at somewhere around 90% of the animation. So this script is going to have that ability soccer and the transition we need we don't need the exit time and i want the transition to be relatively smooth now i want the death loader prefab to have access to the animator that we just created so we just got to add it to the list We haven't created the scriptable object yet, so created a scriptable object called Soccer Tackle. And it's going to have information about the animator. And it's associated with the lower body part and the legs. And I guess you also got to face the attacker. We'll deal with this later. For now, if I click play, Okay, so that's one death animator. Oh, we haven't added the data yet. OK, 
Okay, so let me click play again. This time we should get the soccer tackle animation. Except the transition isn't there yet. Here we forgot to add the transition parameter called force transition. Force transition is true. That's when we move to the ending. I'm going to move the character right next to it. And let me click play again. Okay, so it looks like we got the animation and the transition, but the direction doesn't seem to be right. Let me turn it into a mirror. And try again. Okay, the rotation seems a little off. And I'm gonna try turning this 30 degrees, see if it matches. Apply. Maybe 35. Okay, looks a little better. much better. Let me look at it from a different angle. Okay, looks good. It's not perfect, but we got the basic mechanics right. And I would suggest that you play around with the animations, fine tune it. And that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching.